Hello everybody. I would like to welcome you to my presentation today. I will talk about TASTE, which is a tariff analytical and simulation tool for economists. This tool was developed many years ago by Mark Horridge and David Laborde. And today I am presenting data updates and applications of this program. The work I'm presenting today was done by Mark Horridge and Dean Mustakinov and myself. Why do we need additional programs to aggregate tariffs? At the HS6 digit tariff line level of the harmonized SIF system, we have 219 million data. For example, for butter with a fat content not exceeding 85%, uh, we have a tariff line which is called 040510 and for this specific tariff line we have a specific tariff so and in on the model level we have product aggregates like agricultural primary products agricultural processed products other primary sectors or manufacturers which are aggregated to the model level So while at the detailed tariff line level, 219 million data exists, trade and trade policies are implemented at the tariff line level, which is the HS6 level with six digits, but we have even more detailed tariff line schedules, which uh, are organized at the eight digit, 10 digit, or even 12 digit level. The models like GTAP run at a more aggregated level. To aggregate the tariff data to from the detailed tariff line level and from the level of um, trade policies to the uh, model level, we need additional tools. Therefore, I am presenting TASTE today. So I will look uh, back into the history of TASTE and then come to some future things. I will show which kind of app updates of taste have already taken place. I will show some applications, some limitations and ideas for future developments. 20 years back, the WTO negotiations of the Doha round started. To analyze the impact of the uh, proposals for, of the WTO, researchers had to deal with bound and applied tariff rates and with tiered tariff reduction formulas. So between bound and applied tariff rates, there was a difference. Uh, the bound tariff rates is, was a tariff which was uh, negotiated in the WTO negotiations and the applied tariff was a bilateral tariff which is actually applied between two countries. The tiered tariff reduction formula implies that high tariffs are cut more than low tariffs. So to address both of these issues, there was a need to make the tariff cuts in the database or not at the model level. Additionally, in the database, we had 8 to 11 gigabyte of data. And these data at that time were not harmonized. So they need to convert it into ad valorem equivalents. They were in the initial tables, they are in, uh, for example, in tons or in kilogram or in percentage of alcohol, and everything needs to be converted into percentage tariff rates to make them comparable. And these uh, tariff data are also too large to load them into Excel or into a text editor. So additional programs are needed. A lot of institutions build their own programs to process the data. And one run of these um, additional programs took several hours. 15 years back, we analyzed the WTO negotiations with the help of the statistical software SAS. We built a tariff database at the HS6 digit tariff line level and aggregated this tariff database to the model level of the GTAP model. So we got new base data at the model level. And then we implemented the WTO scenarios starting in the database at the HS6 digit tariff line level, implemented tariff cuts and aggregated the 
reduced tariff rates to the model level. Then we compared the base data at the model level with the reduced tariff rates at the model level, compared them and implemented a shock into the GTAC model. But then Mark Horridge and David Laborde developed the tool TASTE, which is easy to use, fast and flexible. It is easy to use because it lowers the entry barriers to run tariff scenarios. And the format of tariff changes can be directly used by the GTAP model. And it includes predefined formulas. It is extremely fast compared to our SAS tools. It takes an, at maximum five minutes to apply tariff rules to, for 200 million data. And it is flexible. There are two methods of tariff aggregation. So to aggregate the tariffs, we can use trade weighted or reference group weighted aggregation methods. And we can consider bound and applied tariff rates. And for the applied tariff rates, there are most favored nation rates and preferential rates included. The GTAP um, database is based on the MacMaps ITC tariff data, protection data. And um, this taste tool is, is consistent with the tariff data which are included into the standard GTAP model. And taste allows additional uses of these protection data. So for example, the data can be viewed or extracted in more detail with the taste program. It is also possible to implement sector splits and it is possible to build more detailed models where trade is modeled at a six-digit level or at a four-digit level and to include new GTAP sectors. Since 2008, many applications can be found in the literature. So TASTE has been initially used to analyze the impacts of the WTO negotiations. But um, now TASTE is mainly used for regional trade agreements. So we can find studies about TPP, about the CETA, the Canada-EU trade agreement, about TTIP, the African ACP agreement, the um, Japan-EU agreement or the ECOWAS agreement. And uh, we can also find studies about uh, cumulative uh, effects of free trade agreements. Uh, TASTE has been used for studies on the EU enlargement with Croatia. It has been used for Brexit scenarios and also for the implications of uh, trade war wars. And um, there are also some applications where, where partial and general equilibrium models are linked. And it has been used for sector splits. To, and to use a taste, it is necessary to update the data regularly. Since its development, taste has been updated several times. The last version was done for GTAP 10 database with the base year 2014. The data source of this uh, version is the MacMaps ITC database, and it includes applied tariff rates, preferential as well as MFN rates, and bound tariff rate rates. It is based on 219 million records, and that's why the software has been changed from a 32-bit version to a 64-bit version because it was not possible with the old taste to process this high amount of data. In total, we have 4,205 HS categories, which can be aggregated to 65 GTAP sectors according to the GTAP 10 database, and to we have 239 countries in that version, which can be aggregated to 141 GTAP regions. To update, taste, and create a new version, a lot of steps need to be done. First of all, the MacMap database needs to be included. So the MacMap database is provided by the, the ITC and it, um, needs to be included as a text file and with harmonized data into the TASTE program. And 
an update of the GTAB regions and GTAB sectors for the new version needs to be done. Um, the HS6 and HS4 sector classification need to be changed and also the original regions need to be um, adapted. So there needs to be also some classifications for um, WTO members and non-WTO members developing and developed countries. And we include also the trade flows of GTAP because um, TASTE use the trade weights or reference group trade weights uh, for the aggregation procedure. And to make them consistent with the GTAP model, it is necessary to include the GTAP trade flows and scale them to sum to GTAP weights. So it fits perfectly to the GTAP model after the aggregation procedure if the user chooses the scaling. On the following slides, I will show two applications of the TASTE program. The first example is about the trade conflict between China and the USA. On this graph, you can see the import tariffs between China and the USA for selected agricultural products. The gray bars show the initial applied tariff rates before the trade conflict for China and for the US. And you can see that uh, for the US, the tariff protection structure is in the initial situation lower than in China, except for sugar. After several tariff increases and also for agricultural products, the following uh, picture can be shown. So for um, China, they increased uh, tariffs, especially for oil seeds. So this was the uh, soybeans, uh, which were um, highly addressed also in the media, but also for other products, um, tariffs were increased. So and um, for the US, you can see there are several tariff increases for different products. And even in this example, the tariff increases were decided on the detailed tariff line level. So we can just include the um, new tariff schedules of the EU and the US into our taste program and aggregate them to the level of the product groups like wheat, cereals, vegetable fruits, oil seeds and so on. The second example is the Tunin baseline. In our baseline, which we use for um, our modeling, we include all trade agreements of the EU that were already decided and will be phased in with over the next years. So we uh, look into the tariff schedules and include all the tariff rates which are need, which will be reduced within the next years. So, and you can see from these different lines that uh, in some trade agreements, uh, tariffs will be reduced really uh, in the beginning of the agreements, and in some agreements, it's more in the end of this agreement. And so, to take into account all these different um, reduction structures, we include that on the tariff line level into our modeling framework. And then we can aggregate that with the help of our taste program uh, to the model level. For example, if we just look into one specific agreement, this is the agreement between Japan the, and the EU. Um, here you can see the, the initial tariff rates for animal products. And this is a black bar here, and you can see that it is 36% uh, the aggregated tariff for animal products. And then if we look into the tariff reduction schedules and implement all the um, different uh, tariff cuts into our taste program, we can see that uh, the um, tariffs decrease uh, every year uh, until the end of the uh, agreement, uh, the implementation period of the agreement. So this will be 2039. And you can also see that there is a difference between uh, the products which are um, in terms of ad valorem tariffs. And there are also a lot of quotas included into the agreement between Japan and the EU. 
and we developed an additional tool to take into account the tariff rates quotas which will be increased every year during the agreement so you can see that the light green bar or the, the part of the bar which is light green is the part which is uh, the protection um, level that comes due to tariff rate quotas there are many things that you can do with the taste program but there are also some limitations so for example it is not possible to do analysis below the hs6 digit tariff line level this is not possible and sometimes the tariff schedules are um, concluded at the 8 or 10, 10 or 12 digit tariff line level so you have to aggregate them before you can use it in the taste program there is also no facility to create our own formulas there is no automatic feature that allows tariff reductions that are phased in over time. So you have to run the program every year and it is not possible to do it in a kind of dynamic setting. And there is no option to change tariff rate quotas or differentiate between specific and ad valorem tariffs. So for the tariff rate quotas that I presented here, we developed an additional MCP model and included the results into the taste program afterwards. So um, the limitations can be addressed by additional programs, which are more complex, but also more flexible. We also have some ideas for future developments of taste. One idea is to integrate the tariff reduction schedules, which are available um, at the ITC website, and to include uh, some scenario files for every user uh, to have a kind of baseline for uh, specific uh, trade agreements. We also would like to integrate some non-tariff barriers or non-tariff measures. Um, it would be nice to differentiate between specific and ad valorem components of tariffs. All the data are available and they are already included in an aggregated form into a taste, but it would be nice to have them separate. And also to integrate uh, options for tariff rate quotas. Here we have an ad valorem equivalent of the quotas that are already existing in the base data but for future trade agreements we need to run some model behind to see how the fill rate will be used uh, and to integrate in and out quota tariffs here and we at the Trill institute developed an mcp model which um, considers tariff rate quotas and we integrate the results of that mcp model into taste um, but it would be nice to have an option for every user to um, differentiate between in and out quota tariffs. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Goodbye.